What's up, crew? Hey, team. Now, we're stoked to bring you season six on YouTube. We've got heaps more content coming your way. We've got stacks of full episodes. We've got vlogs, and we've got behind-the-scenes content. So hit that subscribe button. Hit it. And join the adventure. Join us. Adventure. Let's, let's go. go. This week on Fishing and Adventure, we're in the Coromandel, fishing in the harbour, spearing flounder, and hitting the coast, catching big snapper. Woohoo! For us, the Coromandel was like our second home and we've been fortunate enough to have access to places on both sides of the peninsula. On the eastern side, the scenery is very hard to beat with its white sand beaches, idyllic harbours, surf breaks and some of the best fishing this country has to offer. Oh man, this is definitely one spot you can never get sick of, eh Mick? Yep. One of the best in the country, I reckon, bro. Absolutely. So we're here for two days. We've got the coast, we've got the harbours, we've got the rivers, see what we can find. We're land-based this week. We don't have the big boat, but we've got the nets, the spears, the rods, and a bit of everything. Absolutely. First things first, this wind's up, so I reckon we uh, hit the creeks and see what we can find. Oh, yeah. The challenge this week is for us to collectively land table fish from the creeks, the harbour, and the coast. The only real options in these creeks are eels, which make great eating, so the first order of the day was to set a couple of hinaki. Nice straight length. Oh, oh mate, I've seen better throws right. on your mum's couch. <laughs> Utilising what's available to you is a great way of doing things, and there's definitely nothing too difficult about setting a hinaki. All you need is a net itself, some bait, a few sticks, and a creek or river. We shot a rabbit on the farm for bait, but anything decaying or smelly will work, including fish bait. Eels eat pretty much anything. Oh, that's got eel written all over it. Yep, Eel City, Mig. So we're going to try and draw these eels up from downstream. So we'll place our hinaki here, tailing back that way so they come in, smell our dirty rabbit bait, swim into the hinaki, get stuck there, and uh, we'll have them for later on, eh, Miggy? Oh, yeah. So how this works, eels come along, this uh, straight bit of net here, vertical bit of net, that guides them in to our centre part, which is a conical sort of net shape with a little bit of a, yeah, basically tapers in. By the time we come back and check this, this will be seething with eels. A bit of land-based action down on the coast. Let's put a swell down there so we, uh, Make sure we chuck our lifeies on, eh, Miggy? Yep. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Oh, looking forward to it. We've caught some big fish at this spot before, so... We have indeed. Here's hoping it turns it on this afternoon. Absolutely. Let's get these uh, rods, gear, bait and burly down there and catch some snaps. Land-based walk-in missions are exciting, challenging and rewarding. Getting to a suitable spot can be hard, but we have access to a good ledge that can be fished at all tides. This coast holds some very big fish at certain times, and with a snapper being the main target species, we've got the heavy gear for stopping these fish from getting to the very treacherous underwater terrain. Always go prepared, as you never do know when that big boy will show up. So I've already got the burley in the water, and the type of fishing we're doing, relatively simple. Single hook for me, unweighted baits. Just gonna cast these in and around our burley trail off the edges of the rocks here. It's evening time, perfect time to be targeting these bigger fish off the bricks. Mig's got a fairly similar setup. He's running with a slightly different rod and slightly different rig. So I'm just running the um, two fixed hooks. Nice, simple rig. Going to slap some nice, fresh bullet tuna on there. Hopefully hip it out to a nice, big, hungry snaps. Woo! Good as run, Dowry. Yeah. Got him. Oh, yeah? Yep. Could be a snapper. What we got? Snapper. Snaps. He's a keeper, too. Might be a keeper, Mick. <laughs> First one for the spot. Yeah. Nice. On the board. We'll pop the first one back. Mm. 
So with this sort of land-based fishing off the rocks like we're doing here, you've got to be willing to adapt to the conditions and what's going on around you. We've got our burley down there to the side. That's flying out nicely, and a lot of the time the biggest snapper will be hanging around the edges. What we've actually found in this situation is most of the snapper we're catching are right next to the burley itself. So what I'm doing is running small, my single hook, and real small baits. So that's it's not a massive hook, it's just a recurve hook from Black Magic. I'm running them through our little baits like that. That's just a small squid. We're using like half pilchards, half ballyhoo, little bits of mullet, things like that. And just letting those float down naturally around that bit burley. And because there's already other little bits of bait and little bits of burley around there, snapper's coming along, grabbing that, and then we're just letting these reels run and free spool for a couple of seconds, flick it into gear, and then we're just fighting them right under the rock. Just be willing to adapt to what's going on around you, and you'll catch a lot more fish. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There you go. All right, what have we got? What have you got here? Is it a carl? I don't know. Might, might be a trev. <laughs> might be a snapper. Oh, it's a snapper! Snap. <laughs> oh, he's under the rock. He's stuck on the rock. There we go. Get him up! <laughs> oh, yeah! How <laughs> yeah, we're talking, mate. Stunning fish. You can see the dark colours there, living in around the kelp and the weeds, the rocks. So he's a resident from around this area. And he's going to make some great eating later on, so... Stoked. Put him out of his misery. Ick him in the head there. Yep. He's dead. Chuck him in the bag and uh, hopefully get another one. Woo! Oh, get him keep up, him up Benjamin, keep him up! Get him up, mate. Go, Bridget. Oh, yes, we're going! Yes! We're on the eastern side of the Coromandel Peninsula, and the challenge is set to catch table fish from the creeks, the harbour, and the coast. With the El Hinaki set in a nearby creek, we are already well underway at our land based rock fishing spot with a couple of nice snapper. The burley is flowing nicely, and we're now looking for that biggest specimen. Good fish? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, it's got it. Yep. Oh, oh snaps. Oh, yeah, goody. <laughs> oh, I need the net, eh? Yes, please. I might need a net as well, Maggie. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah, let's get him in there, boat. Not a monster, but another beautiful snapper off the bricks. This spot's really provided for us today. There he is. And he's in good nick, so we're going to send him back in the drink. Yo, yeah, Ben. Well, it's a goodie, it's a goodie. Oh, get him keep up, him up ben. Benjamin, keep him get up. Get him up, mate. Go Ben's on, Ben's a good snapper here. Just straight out of the burly trail. Yeah, oh, nice boy, fish. nice fish. Get him and go. No, go. Can't. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Nice! <laughs> Woo! Spot Look, him in the burley. Both, Sight fish for him, basically. Both hooks in the corner of the mouth. Smoke that bait. So what'd you get him on, Ben? Yeah, it's on a bit of belly. Just wound it in, checked the bait. It was still on there, so dropped him down right next to that burley bag. Yeah. And it was right there. <laughs> I like saw it. him take the bait, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Ah, good stuff. Nice fish, mate. Nice fish. Thank you. Although attempting to keep fishing into the night, we had enough snapper for a feed and our coast table fish were successfully ticked off. We had the rest of the challenge still ahead of us, so I was back to base to get some rest and get into the harbour adventure the next morning. All right, big bit of uh, spear fishing for flounder. Yeah, something a little bit different. We've never done it before, so I'm um, keen to give it a crack. Yeah, we've done it at night with the lights and uh, stabbed them, but there's something a bit different. We're going to hopefully float over the top of them, see if we can't nab ourselves a couple of nice blackfish. Oh, yeah. All righty. It's getting the drink of two bloody hot sand here. Way too hot. <laughs> Look at the size of this guy. Oh, man. Swimming around for about two minutes. And I thought of my Christmas would come at once when I saw him. Oh, that's a good size flounder. And I think the boys have found another one, so I'm going to put this one in the bag and then carry on. Yeah. <laughs> 
Most harbours around New Zealand hold flounder, and they don't go anywhere at night, so it stands to reason they're still going to be there during the day. You just need to look around for them, and they're actually quite easy to spot. Yeah. Another one. Yep. <laughs> Literally been in here 10 minutes, and that's flounder number four for us. My third one, so I'm stoked. This one's a, I think it's a sand flounder, not a yellow belly. I think the other two were yellow belly, or the other three. This got white underneath. But still a legal size. Still another beautiful eater. This is so much fun. Six in the bin now. In all of how many minutes? 20 minutes in the water. So I think now we just try and do a little bit of something different. Maybe a bit of catch and release. Woo! <laughs> With the harbour table fish ticked off in under an hour, we headed back up to our uncle Chris's place to chat about the next mission and chill out while he prepared us a resort-style lunch, including our fresh flounder. Being able to provide a meal from the water we look out onto is something we should all be able to experience, but not take for granted. The effects of overfishing and pollution are becoming more apparent and we must all work together to ensure that these waters are thriving and plentiful for our future generations. That said, we are still fortunate enough to be able to provide this amazing kaimoana, and one thing is true, freshly caught and cooked flounder is very, very hard to beat as a table fish. Cheers, Uncle. When we were rock fishing, we had a couple of different styles of rods that we like to use. As opposed to your surf casting beach rods, these rock fishing rods are a little bit shorter. I've got an eight foot six two piece. X Factor breaks down like that, which is nice and easy for you carrying into your land based locations. Backed up with a solid Okuma Coronado there. Bait feeder option on the back. Fantastic for straight lining up these big snaps. Another option is this Kingfish stick bait rod. So it's nice and long, it's eight foot. So it gives you a good bit of leverage when you're on the rocks. Also, it does break down at the butt section, so it's nice and easy to cart down. Backed up with the Avenger bait feeder. So, again, bait feeder real, nice and easy to stray line off the rocks with it. And it is a kingfish rod, so it's got plenty of grunt for pulling their heads out of the bricks. So, these are both awesome combos for fishing off the rocks. Got him. Look at the size of that thing! <laughs> We're on a land-based adventure in the Coromandel, and the challenge is set to land table fish from the creeks, the coast, and the harbour. We've already ticked off our coast fish with some nice snapper off the rocks before nailing the harbour species thanks to a daytime spearing session for flounder. Our eel hienaki is set in a nearby creek, which will be the last challenge fish required to avoid consequence. We've still got an evening to kill, so it's back out on the harbour, but this time with the secret weapon, MV Honwave. The Honwave is a first-class harbour fishing vessel with cutting-edge inflatable technology. It's fully kitted out with the latest of Honda's offering with a whopping 2.2 horsepower of outright grunt. Well, uh, safe to say this is something a little bit different for us, Scotty. Absolutely, mate. A little bit of harbour fishing and MV Honwave. <laughs> She'll do the job. We've got our uh, rod holders at the back. We've got our little bit of bait and burly in here. What more do we need, mate? Nothing. 
Right, Ready to get... fish now, though. Let's do it, all right. Let's uh, find a good, suitable spot. Edge of a channel. Anchor up. Run some burley, run some little baits, and hopefully catch some harbour species. All righty. Into it. When fishing harbours, try and fish the edges of the channel and use burley to bring the fish on the bite. It's usually shallow water, so try to be as quiet as possible to avoid spooking the fish. So we're just starting off with a bit of mussel bait. A couple of mussels, just the black lip mussels. Not so good for eating, we got them out of the estuary earlier. But they're uh, good for, for bait, so. <laughs> How's that going, Mick? There's, there's Mick's mussel bait. So your hook's over that way. <laughs> Oh, well what happened there? Oh, you know exactly what happened there. The oh. old Miguel special. Oh, golly gosh. We're fishing with recurve hooks. It's, um, oh, it's just one of the good things about fishing with braid. It's also be a pain is that you always rip the hooks out of the fish's mouth. So with a recurve hook, you're tempted not to strike. So we just let the rod load up and boom, set that hook, hopefully. Oh, oh that's a, a right, that that's a hit. That was a proper hit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, Mickey. Oh, yes, Mick. Come on. Yeah. This has got to be a Trevor. This is going to be a Trevor. It's monstrous. Look how far back you are. Oh, they've come on the chew. They're hooking up all of a sudden. First fish for the Honway. That's a Trevor Alley. That's a Trevor. Yes, Trevor. Trevor the Hutt. He's <laughs> nigh on legal. Ooh. He's nigh on legal. We'll give him a measure, Rooney. Yeah, she's only 25 for the Trevs. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nicely hooked in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful little harbour trev. He'll go back in the drink. Get him back. Oh. oh. Got him. Yep, got him. Ooh. That's a feisty one. Trevally. OK, here he comes. Oh, yeah, oh we a might nice be a better one, one that one. a nice one, yeah. All right. Good stuff. I don't think that might be in the bin, Mick. He is in the bin. Sashimi on. Oh. 25? Yep, we'll double check and then... Yeah, we'll give him a measure and then if he's a 25er, you're pretty sure he is, he's in the bin. Sweet ass. Hang on. This could be the one that... Uh... Oh! <laughs> Boys. Oh, I like that sound. I'll put this tiddler back in. I'll get the net ready for Mick, this is a goodie. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a goodie. He's a definitely better than the... Oh, under the boat. Oh, into the net, into the net. Yeah, get into the net, you... Oh, oh he's a tangled hey. on the bills. He's <laughs> tangled <laughs> on the bills. Tangled oh, there the we bill. go. Oh, we got him. Yeah. Nice fish, mate. Nice. That's a good harbour trev. Awesome. I just untangled my hook out of the... You're pretty much the in the water bag. yourself, Mick. I am. <laughs> oh, hold up a sec. Yeah. Nicely lip hooked. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hold tight around that tail and you won't, won't be able to flop out. Yeah. Yee -hee. Nice. Oh, nice little tree and a mean scrap. That's what you want. Underrated, underrated little fish. Often, not often targeted, but quite often found in these little harbours. So, this um, is a perfect way to target them, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Single hook, single little reef curve hook. Just little strips of... Um, Benito doing the damage. Like that there. Nice good stra scrap out of him, so he's going to make it in the bin. It's definitely a nice, tasty table fish out of the harbour ticked off. Oh, well, should we down to, what, knee deep water now? Yep. I got my foot on the ground anchoring the boat, so if no one doesn't pull us away. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Come on. He's coming in fast. Hang on. Hard and fast, hard and fast. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's a beast. <laughs> yeah. That's oh. a beast. That might be my PB. That's a PB. <laughs> Go on. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> that is a puaka. <laughs> Man. That's worth it, mate. That's oh, definitely that's worth epic. it. epic. It was, oh, I mean, Kawai of good fun. That's a monster. I wonder it took you so long to get it in. <laughs> What a horse! Oh, patience is a virtue. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that hook is about to come out as well. Look at that. That hook's out. Oh, me. On the pilly tail, which I always love. Or belly, whatever it was. Far out, mate. Is that the end of our uh, straight line session? Because it's basically there's the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might have to be. Half a metre of water, so we need to get back before the tide actually drops completely. Yep, we'll scoot on back and, um, yeah, get this Done. guy in the bin.
Nice. After well and truly nailing the coast and harbour species, we left the Hinaki to soak overnight and headed back out the next day to check our catch. We were very confident that it would be chocker full of eels and we would avoid the consequence, but upon inspection, it was empty. We knew the creek held eels, so it was now a case of having to catch them the uncomfortable way. And here we are again, mate. By average. We got close. Yeah. But, uh, alas, hands in the holes. Grab the Let eels. the eels do their thing. <laughs> All right, let's do it then. All Get right, it over and done with. Let's go, let's go. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is sucks. This sucks. Are we doing it? Do we? Yeah, are we doing it? Uh, are we doing it? Are we doing it? Oh. <laughs> 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 no, I've got, I've got my clothes on. Go in there. Oh, oh, oh. There's one in there. <laughs> something, uh, something in there. Go then. I got in my eye. Go then. Oh, this is, this is the worst thing I think I've ever done. Oh, 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 yeah. oh shit. That's this guy. He's, there, he's definitely there. Oh. Get him. Get him. Is that your money? Yes. We got him. Oh, we got him. Well, we're going to for a consequence. Oh, grim. <laughs> anyway, there's our uh, we think it's a long fin deal. Awesome little creature. We're going to chuck him back in the drink. But a good couple of days up in Potty Awesome couple of days. Yeah. And yeah, we'll catch you next week.